It's Thursday night at 8 p.m. And you know what that means. Mm, we talk uncut. This is the Xbox Uncut Weekly Podcast. Should I cover my body in various Oreos to get chicks? Yes. That's Dustin. They don't call them Xbox Uncut's muscle for nothing. You need to you need to treat yourself if you're not again. Steve rules. More like Steve makes the ladies drool. You can take it off and you can give it to your lady. Hmm, that's Vern. They call him the golden throw. I'm triggered. <laughs> I'm so triggered right now, man. Better watch out, ladies. Jason's a poster out of control. One that I went crazy when it came out and I literally ate like three three bags of them. Eric may be the quick look guru, but ladies, <laughs> he ain't quick. And then you get like loads of milk and like funnel it in. If you throw See, some I- Fruit Loops in there, I've seen this porn app. Yeah, that works for you people who live, you know, across the ocean where you can actually control your urges and stuff. <laughs> hey, baby, you want some pumpkin spice? <laughs> I'm sitting up, I have, you have my full attention. Can we call this Oreo and cut from now on? <laughs> Welcome to Xbox Uncut's weekly podcast. We're back for another week. No, we're not. This is a special show. Uh, so hopefully Lionhead will be back for another week <laughs> of development and games. But we're here to talk about all the crazy news that happened today. Joining me today to comment on this bizarre morning, uh, we got Vern. Welcome to the show, Vern. Thank you for the kind welcome. Well, thank you for showing up. Yeah. yeah. Unlike employees for a couple of studios yeah. pretty soon. We also have probably, you know, the cornerstone of all thing Europe, Steve Rules from SteveRules.com. I'm wondering if I should hand in my notice to the show. <laughs> Seeing as how you European correspondent are paying apart from, you know, like Lionhead and uh, not Lionhead. Uh, Rare. Rare and Mojang oh, and, and Lift London's uh... It's about the same number as the actual United States teams <laughs> Yeah, yeah there's, there's, uh, <laughs> They're pretty thin on the ground these, these days now Hey, all, but they're matching the amount of money they're put into marketing <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's very encouraging for the Xbox brand <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you haven't heard, <laughs> Lionhead Studios is, I'm going to call them in limbo, right? You want, me to read, this... you want me to read the press release? I got it here. Yes, read the press release. Okay, this is from uh, Hanno Lemke, who is the general manager of Microsoft Studios Europe. It's titled, Changes at Microsoft Studios UK and Denmark. Not much, Today, uh, not much left to manage, by the way. After it's true. This, after this post. So, so Hanno says, Today, I have some difficult changes to announce that affect some of our Microsoft Studios teams and projects in the UK and Denmark. After much consideration, we have decided to cease development on Fable Legends and are in discussions with employees about the proposed, the proposed closure of Lionhead Studios in the UK. Additionally, we will close Press Play Studios in Denmark and Sunset Development on Project Knoxville. These have been tough decisions, and we have not made them lightly, nor are they a reflection on those development teams. We are incredibly fortunate to have the talent, creativity, and commitment of the people at these studios. The Lionhead Studios team has delighted millions of fans with the Fable series over the past decade. Press Play imbued the industry with a unique creative spirit behind games like Max, The Curse of the Brotherhood, The Curse of Brotherhood, and Kalimba, which both captured passionate fans. These changes are taking effect as Microsoft Studios continues to focus its investment and development on the games and franchises that fans find most exciting and want to play. I speak for all of Xbox when I say that despite this news, we remain committed to the development communities in the UK and Europe, and Xbox will continue to support new IP and originality in the games we offer on our platforms. Whether they're AAA blockbusters like Quantum Break from Remedy, 
adventurous new IPs like Sea of Thieves from Rare, or unique new creations from independent developers like Moon Studios Authority. We have nothing but heartfelt thanks for the members of Lionhead and Press Play for their contributions to Xbox and gaming. We are committed to working closely with those affected by today's news to find them new opportunities at Xbox or partnering with the broader development community to help place them in jobs elsewhere in the games industry should they desire. End press release. So, Sound like a bunch of bull. So where were you when Lionhead died? <laughs> I was about to go into a meeting and it broke literally two minutes beforehand. I got a DM and someone was like Lionhead with an unhappy face. And I was like, what do you mean Lionhead? And then I quickly had the time to read this thing and then and then go. And I was in there for an hour. So I didn't I didn't know anything that happened. I mean, when I saw it, people were saying, oh, you know, if they've been hacked, you know, has Xbox Y been hacked or something? Like, people were disbelieving, uh, you know, and I wasn't well, really sure. Well, you DM'd me, like, right away, too. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I, you know. Oh, that was, man. That was a bit of a shocker, to be perfectly honest. Didn't you well, feel like it was an April Fool's joke or something? It's like, is it April? What? Well, <laughs> yeah, I... I mean, I've been pretty outspoken on Fable Legends in the past, and and I also said pretty much exactly the same thing about Knoxville. And look where we are today on the eighth of March, seventh of March, actually, where you are. We've come to this. I mean, it's years of uh, mismanagement, poor decisions. Uh, but not- I talked to you about this pretty recently, and you were like, "Oh no, they're not going to close Lionhead. They'll give him one more shot. They'll, you know, even if Fable mm-hmm. Legends fails, they'll give him one more shot." And I was talking to you, you know, maybe about a month or two ago, and saying, "You know, if this doesn't do well, they're going to be closed." Well, uh, the thing is, so on on Games Radar, I was probably going to get to this later, but I'll I'll get to it now. Uh, they so they had the the Xbox Showcase a couple of weeks back. And Games Radar asked Phil Spencer about Lionhead, uh, and this is, and the I mean even the so this is quite interesting. So this is five hours before this all happened from a community manager on the Lionhead forums. Whilst uh, whilst we were well aware there is an eagerness for people to have more information and for everyone to play the game, we don't want to rush something out there that would disappoint. We're taking the time and effort to really review feedback and data and update and improve the game based on that. Sure, that means a few delays along the way, but ultimately it's better to have a late but good game um, than an instant but not not as good game. And that was five hours before the announcement happened. Then these, these are the quotes from Phil Spencer. Um, uh, now whilst we probably... Whilst it probably wasn't a surprise for Xbox boss Phil Spencer, he was clearly not giving away anything at last week's Xbox Spring Showcase when we asked how Fable Legends was going and if we'd ever see another numbered Fable. His answer didn't suggest a dead game walking. I think we could do many things with Fable. I think the world of Albion and the hero-based nature of the game could show up in many different spaces, was his reply. Um, Although they noted it was oddly reflective and, and dodges about how the game's going. Then he says, it's been in beta for a while, and we are watching the engagement numbers. The thing around Legends that I'm committed to is I want to make sure it's uh, to make sure it release its release matches the expectations in terms of quality that our customers deserve. So it's not about releasing something because it's on a poster because there was a date posted somewhere. Then he says, for the studio itself, Lionhead Phil stated that the team's really committed to what they're doing with Fable right now and referenced a healthy turnover at the studio as a reason why they couldn't do a big single-player RPG-driven thing like the Fable of Old, because this, this, that studio isn't that same studio. They've really crafted themselves around Fable Legends. And then the other one just finished with, the idea that the team was so tightly interwoven with its product might go some of the way to explain why both studio and game seem to have been shut down together. I th- I think that's that that's interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, games as a service is a bit different. They were making something free to play online. You know, the idea that they needed to keep producing content. Uh, I mean, is is this? What do you guys think? Anything from you, Dustin? Oh well, uh, I guess I don't know. Like I just 
I think it's right. It's it's one of those things like they, like he said they, they were designed to make MMOs. They they got rid of all the original Fable guys, and it was literally like we need yeah, to, we need to do what everybody else is doing, and that's like MMO slash Dota style, like just false rate. Like they're just trying to get that market. And yeah, and they and they brought in two developers, especially who were really experienced with this, with uh, John Needham, mm -hmm. who ran Cryptic for a long time. So you know he was behind what uh, City of Heroes, um, uh, Champions Online. I think he was probably still there with uh, Star Trek Online. You know, so he's got a real background in MMOs. And then they also brought in uh, David Elkeberry, who had uh, spent time at Turbine Studios for a long time. You know, working on Dungeons and Dragons Online, Lord of the Rings, those games like that. So uh, they were uh, they obviously retooled themselves for that type of game, and I imagine it would be hard to suddenly switch to a Fable Four, especially when their their team makeup is so completely different. You know? Yeah. And uh, that's the big shame because. You know, you look at the, the roadmap of, of Lionhead under Microsoft. Obviously, they bought them in 2006 and announced Fable 2. That came out, did really well, was really well received. And then they made Fable 3, which Peter, Molyneux, which Peter Molyneux said was rushed in two years. He was really disappointed with it and they needed to sell 5 million copies. You know, then Peter Molyneux left. I think some other people left. And then they made Fable Heroes for Xbox Live Arcade and Fable... The journey for Connect and the Fable the Journey for Connect sold very poorly. You know, when Rare was selling, you know, they sold like nine million units between their two Connect Sports games in was it twenty ten and twenty eleven? And in twenty twelve, you know, Lionhead released that. And well it came out at the wrong time. If it had come out a year earlier, it would have probably had completely different sales. But then and then after that, I mean they did Anniversary, which I mean that was supposed to be out in October before the three uh, before the Xbox One came out. I mean, they delayed it to February. I think it did okay, but then and then they moved all in on, you know, Fable Legends, and it was like, well, you know, their trajectory was was all wrong. You know, they moved off of what they knew. They got new people in. It's not worked. Like, I, I guess, and I guess it kind of is inevitable. I mean, you know, it, it's just. I think it's a big shame that they're they're losing a two hundred person studio. But they're also they losing have. a game with a ton of content that was near complete. That's that's the strangest thing about this. I mean, I understand there is going to be a high cost as far as maintenance, developing new content, you know, keeping this game going even if it doesn't do well. And that's probably why they decided to cut their losses. But this is a big game with a lot of content. Like there's a ton of missions in it from i mean i guess I, I i don't know what's going on with the nda but honestly i don't care at I'm this sorry point about it now what yeah they do? kick you out exactly i don't care at this point there's a ton of characters all with different play styles a lot of them are really fun to play um there's a ton of missions and each mission has its own map it's not like they're doing using the same map for different missions you know um it actually had quite a a lot of story stuff, a little more than I expected. And what was really neat is before each individual mission and after each individual mission, it has this like, you know, theater set cutout quality to it that you've probably seen in the in the trailers and stuff like that. But that's how they do all the stories. Like your character walks through them and the, the story keeps revealing itself. And it's a it's a really cool process. The voice work was good. Um the art direction is amazing. I mean, all the, the enemies and the characters look really good. There's a, a lot of fun humor to the game. Every character had, you know, all their different emotes. The, the, um, the base area, what was it called? Uh, Bright Lodge looked gorgeous. And the only thing was, well, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot to do in it right now. Uh, and you couldn't actually be with other players in that space which was kind of weird too. Like there was, there were just a ton of design issues with the game. I will I will say that, but there was a lot that worked and was still fun. And I kind of feel like it could have been salvaged. It, it and it didn't have to be salvaged by making a games as a service game. Still, I mean, they could have salvaged it by just making it a regular old co op game that you play with three other players. And I know you don't really love this idea, Steve, but I, I feel like they could have just gotten rid of the villain completely from the game. And then just scripted 
all of the all of the missions instead of having it be like an AI or a person controlling what all the characters do. And it probably still could have been really fun and really good since they had all that work done as far as the 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 characters and the basic story and all the basic level design stuff. I mean, it's all there. I just it, it seems like a real loss. Ton of effort went into this and no one's going to see it outside the people in the closed beta. And it's really sad. I mean, the, the, I mean, I, I understand the, the theory of this Destiny style cult loot game that's scripted and stuff, but I think that that would probably be a, a lot more work and I'd take a lot more time than you think it would, it would take. It would take a good and year that, of work. Uh, it would take well, a good think, year of work. Well, I think, it, well, I mean, it's. No, they could be done in a year. Look what Destiny did. They completely rewrote the story and retold everything to war. So if they can do that in a year at Bungie, they could do that in a year at Lionhead, because it's probably a similar team size. I agree. I think they could have salvaged it some way. But they didn't want to salvage it. Because he, my guess is maybe Phil Spencer thought the core gameplay wasn't that fun. Um, and maybe, yeah, maybe that's a part of it. Like... You know, it, in Lionhead fashion, the controls were a little laggy. You know, the, it didn't have that kind of feedback that a great game has, just like all the other Lionhead games that have come out in the past. So, you know, maybe that's part of it. But there's a lot of good stuff in this game, and I really do think it could have been salvaged, and I think it could have been a decent game. But not great, but decent, you know? And, and it's but it's kind of sad because like it would have fit in with the games that are popular right now. Destiny did well, you know. It looks like the division is going to do really well, and they could definitely have tooled this game into being something similar, maybe like a Fantasy Star Online, same kind of thing. Um, and it would have it, it would have um, kind of filled a need for that particular. Uh, I guess for that genre in a way, like because there there was no fantasy game that's like Destiny or or like The Division, you know. It's not there, so it, I think it would have found a a decent Niche. player base. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe they should have never said, "Hey, we're gonna make this free to play." That should have never been announced until later. And maybe they could have retooled it and sold it as a sixty dollars game that way. But obviously, that's hindsight. And as Cam Newton says, hindsight's fifty-fifty. <laughs> but uh, um, we didn't talk about the Reddit poster stuff, too, huh? No, go yeah. ahead and read. The... Well, a Reddit poster named LT Labcoat, uh, and it says what did it say, like Lionhead developer or something like that. He just kind of wrote, ah, to this news, like just a whole bunch of A's with an exclamation point. And he says, actually, it doesn't affect me that much. My contract was ending pretty soon anyway. So in actuality, all it means for me is that my game isn't released. But still, dang, I wasn't expecting that at all. Say, if any of you handsome gentlemen run a game company, how would you like to hire a new build engineer? I've got all the Win 10 Xbox One tech experience to enhance your company. You guys have Xbox PGO? No, that's because we're one of the first. You should totally hire me. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm not fully out of a job yet. As the article says, they're discussing closing Lionhead, so there might be a turnaround. I'm not privy to what that's about, though, so don't ask me questions. So, once again, this is proposed. It's not official, but the current Microsoft Studios website does not have uh, Lionhead on there, any on there anymore, so... It's looking like it's probably going to be canceled. It's yeah, the, the Microsoft, sorry, the Microsoft Studios website update was interesting. They're, they've always had like a panel for for studios, um, and today they uh, updated it and removed. I think it was like eight studios. Team Dakota's gone. Who did uh, Project Spark? Big Park. Who did Connect Joyride back in the day? Then. Uh, they did like NFL apps. Lionhead have gone. Press Play have gone. Then they've lost uh, Sota, Function Studios, LXP, and Good Science, all of whom were on HoloLens. And now I'm they're guessing, down to 10. I'm, I'm guessing those are all probably dissolved into one HoloLens type studio or something, huh? 
I guess. The Sullivan's, I mean, yeah. We knew that Team Dakota were on their way out. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, obviously, I mean, obviously, Twisted Pixel left recently as well. Go independent. I mean, I mean, I, I would, I think that this is this and what happened with Twisted Pixel are under the very same banner of well, Twisted Pixel were able to were able to leave. Whereas, I mean, are many people probably going to buy Lionhead and the Fable IP? And you know, uh, this kind of goes back to what you said on the last podcast about um about Phil Spencer kind of either being on the bandwagon or not getting the job essentially you know about microsoft uh, about xbox moving in the same division as microsoft you know mm. and you and you look at the studios that are currently there and the big ones you know like 343 uh, i um the coalition uh turn 10 rare and mo yang they are kind of all moving in that same direction you know the, those are all they're all making games that can be monetized in some way as whether it be like DLC, DLC as far as like expansions you buy, or um, like in the case of Halo, you know the card packs, or they're all using you know Microsoft servers, uh, like a, they're all using Azure, you know, and I, I guess they all kind of fit that same company initiative, so it makes sense for those studios, and they're all they're all big and they're lean, and they're putting out products consistently i guess you know that's that's and that's what they want that's what they want for their internal studios uh, and but the thing is you look at the competition of sony and nintendo you look at where their strengths lie uh-huh and their strengths lie in their big i mean i'm not going to say that nintendo's is necessarily too varied but like all of their highest quality stuff is developed Internally, they have a very high quality bar. They do pretty well at getting titles out. They had a bit of a wobble with the with the Wii U and the HD transition. You know, Phil's talked about wanting to be like Nintendo, and you look at Sony. You know, you know they kind of have like their big studios that also partner with other people, uh, like Sony Santa Monica, Sony Japan, and was it like Liverpool, London? And Microsoft don't really have any of that. I mean, okay, you know, they've they've got. Halo, they've got Gears, they've got Minecraft, yeah, and they've got Forza, and as it stands, they've got Rare. I mean, how long? How long? If you know, if Sea of Thieves doesn't do too well, are Rare gonna are Rare gonna suffer the same fate? Like they can't have just four AAA. They can't just have four AAA studios. Like I, d- I don't understand. Do they have any more? The, the plan, and we and things you- we we said this when they still had Twisted Pixel, Lionhead, Press Play. You know, I've been saying this for a long time. They need, and it, Team Dakota. I, I don't understand <laughs> what message they're trying to give us with all these closures. I mean, it's almost, it just looks like something that people have said for a long time is that actually they're not very good at managing studios because they all seem to get shut or or, or something or another. Or, you know, the coalition, you know, there's an article on the, was it the Vancouver Sun website where Mike Crump, who's the executive producer, was like we're definitely not making anybody else's IP. We're making our own new IP. It's going to be huge. It's going to be bigger than about eight months later. The new IP was cancelled. They're all on gears. Yeah. yeah. You know what though? It's a good choice. You know it's going to sell. Microsoft's not going to dump that IP. It's a, it's a safe choice. <laughs> it's a really safe uh, choice. Stephen pointed this out too. It's a safe choice, and it's it's Microsoft not taking risks essentially. You know. And that's what a big company does. And it's kind of a bummer, and hopefully they stop that. <laughs> It'd be nice I mean, to get something different. No, but if they, the thing is, is if they were from day one going, okay, we're going to do, we're going to do more things like Sunset Overdrive, you know, we're going to take those risks. We might not own the IP, but we're going to take the risk and gain the reward. But they're not. Mm. They decided not to do that. Yeah. Well, they're we're they're gonna, gonna, we're going to focus on internal IPs. Well, they, well, they're going to do it. With, what they're showing that they're going to do is they're going to do it with uh, independent developers, yeah. and still own the IP, like what they're doing with Scalebound, like what they're doing with ReCore, um, or even Crackdown to some extent, because they own the IP and they're hiring outside developers to work on it. Um, but let's hope they keep doing it. You know, I, this this E3 will be very telling. 
if they get uh, that because they need to announce stuff. I yeah. mean, we don't know anything that's coming out in 2017 besides what like Crackdown and Scalebound. Maybe you see if these gets delayed, you know, and then there's going to be Forza Motorsport in that year. But what else is there? Like, is, there's not going to be a Halo 6. There's not going to be a new Minecraft, you know. There might be a State of Decay game. That's a possibility. But they need, that. there's a lot of slots to fill in 2017, and now they're going to have, they can't fill them internally. They have to fill them with independent developers, and who knows if that's going to work out. You know, I'm just I'm I'm really really curious because like they I can't imagine they would have let all these teams go without having other things lined up, or maybe they don't have things lined up. It's it's really we, really strange. We have about a hundred days to find out. You know. Yeah. Hopefully, they don't need those hundred days to find out too. <laughs> I, yeah. I just, I, I just don't know. I don't really know what message this this sends. I don't think they're trying to send a message. I think they're just doing Cleaning what they house. do. Yeah. yeah. And see, see, and the, the, the side of this is is that you know is Phil Spencer is he know, cleaning with, house to rebuild or is he just cleaning house and that's it, right? <laughs> and you know, and they've released this message. I mean, as far as the message goes, I think it was very clear the reason why. These has been cancelled. This, you know, and I said in what the, the fourth paragraph, third paragraph. Um, these changes are taking effect as Microsoft Studios continues to focus its investment and development on the games and franchises the fans find the most exciting and want to play. So clearly, that they have people telling them that actually we're not interested in Fable Legends, we're not interested in Knoxville. But you know, but I, I talked about this on previous shows and I got knocked down. Was Knoxville ever a particularly good idea for press play? I don't was, think any was three any, of those was games any of were. those three ideas a good idea for press play. Like uh, you know, they yeah. made Max, which was a nice, cute, um, two point five D platform. I mean, Kalimba, that is you know for a two D game like that, that is an exceptionally well designed game. I was very impressed with that. You know, for for what it was, a ten dollar game, and you go and look at Project Knoxville, and you think an eleven person Hunger Games thing. Like, I'm not saying that the concept is flawed, but I don't think that they were the studio to do it. Yeah. You know, that wasn't when the strengths like you know why are they not making like, uh, you know, another action platform every, or everything... a top down thing like Zelda or something. Yeah. Why are they not making like a three D platformer, perhaps like Ukulele, in terms of the the styling, mm-hmm. you know, Unity, you know, a similar amount of people. Like, I don't, you know, and Fable Legends, you know, they're all on, you know, I get why Microsoft are so interested in the cloud, okay? But, and I, I said they this have before, the tools, yeah. is that what use is, is they're focusing on a tech point rather than, well, is this a good idea for the game? I mean, you know, we already had this with Fable The Journey and it did not work. So then the next thing is... I want us to go and work on the cloud and free to play, multiplayer, cross play, cross buy thing. I mean, how much money did they just waste? I mean, I, I bet that Fable Legends cost them an absolute fortune. Well, yeah, it was almost released. It was com- it was just about finished. I mean, they really didn't have that much more to put into this game. It could have been probably ready to ship in like a month or two, if they really wanted to. So. Well, I think the problem is that I don't think I don't think it was. I, th- I mean, that post from the it community was, manager. As people you, that uh, they, 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 as people uh, that were in the beta, I think we can all say at this point it was pretty fucking close. I it played was. it. Ferns played it. You played it, Steve. Yeah, but like, that doesn't mean that it they was must've. really freaking close to just being a not a great game. But, but being released in open game. beta, it could have yeah. been released in open beta and made money within the next month or two. I think. Yep. I really do think so, and I don't think it would have been the best impression. Could I feel like I another disagreed. six months. I feel like another six months, you know, would have been useful to make a good first impression. But they could have released it as is, or almost as is, you know. But. I, just, I mean, it still needed things, though. You know, it needed balance issues. They needed, they had some really bad balance issues as far as the enemies were concerned. It needed subtitles for all the cutscenes and stuff like that. It just it needed extra polish in all these different areas, and that's where you know another six months would have been really nice. 
but if you put it in open beta, you can still make those polish adjustments in yep. open beta, you know? But apparently they just didn't think it was ready. Yeah, like you said, they canceled it, so. And, you know, and it's just, you know, as I said, they, they did this with Connect, and now they're doing it with the cloud. And the cloud has its obvious advantages for, you know, I guess more regular games like Halo or even Crackdown, but I don't think it takes a Mystic Meg to to see from a long way away that actually these two projects were just a good idea. They also did it with Smart Glass. (laughs) (laughs) Well, exactly. Remember that? And they also, yeah, they did it with Kinect too. Like with even Dead Rising 3, remember? It had Smart Glass uh, in it, and it also had the Kinect thing where you push the controller, you know. Yeah, to do motion controls. Yeah, and it... it, Which actually, you're right. But yeah, but just, you're right. They're forcing yeah. this stuff into games for no reason. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, I remember when uh, Titanfall was shown at the, the the Video Game Awards, and Jeff Keighley. Uh, it was about four months before launch, and Jeff Keighley said, "You know, is this going to use Connect?" And the look on his face, and he said, "No, this game doesn't suit Connect. Like, like, like they tried, they yeah. tried, but he was like, no." And it's you know, and I remember when uh, um, Obsidian talked about that cancelled game that they were working on for Microsoft, and they were asked about Smart Glass and Connect, and they said, you know, we would have had to include those things, and it's like, why? Like, if it's not going to add, and let's be perfectly honest here, did any of that Smart Glass stuff add anything? No. Yes, no. the Dead Rising Three was the only game at all that made any difference, and it was, it was- cool. But, but it, it was a one-time it. use, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, it was the one use that was cool. But like the so the rise, the, the rise app was fucking useless. Oh no, it was like, completely. It was absolutely I, I'm useless. Saying, I'm not saying that any of it was useful. <laughs> I just think they found like one developer found one good reason to use it, <laughs> yeah. and that was the only way it was ever going to be cool. Yeah. I mean, how many horror games can you come up with that you pick up the phone and somebody like talks to you? Uh huh. Like maybe three, and then that that whole gimmick is done. Yeah. Like that's it. And um, Rise had voice commands, but things is that they tried to push them on you because if you press the button, it was slower. You had to hold it down, and it's like. <laughs> you know, but, and this is this is the same thing. And don't get me wrong, I am absolutely not against cloud usage, right? But you, you know, someone has to sit there and think: Does this studio suit it? Does this game suit it? You know, I mean, I personally don't even find Warzone all that wholly compelling. Well, well, Phil Spencer is thinking but, that, and then if it doesn't suit it, he just cancels it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, and I've and I've also again said this before, so I'm going over myself again and again here. But you know, in 2016, we could be very close to you know Fable Four coming out or a new IP, and it's like I, was, you know, you look at something like The Witcher, The Witcher Three, astounding game, astounding scale, it sold well too. You know, the amount of money that they poured into Fable Legends. Imagine if 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 they had had done an RPG. I mean, it didn't even have to be a Fable RPG. They could have just made something brand new. And they had that coming out soon. That would, have added, four, yeah. that, would have un- add, that would have added something massive to their lineup. I mean, I know that they've got Scalebound coming next year. Um, and, and that's, a, you know, I guess that's probably similar enough. But I don't think RPGs necessarily kill each other as long as they're reasonable enough time apart yeah but instead fable legends like how many people were genuinely excited for fable legends were genuinely excited that that lionhead had spent three and a half years on this they wanted to spend a lot more time on this that they completely repurposed the studio to focus on this project obviously phil spencer wasn't well exactly and then you know and, and then let's and let's look at what's let's look at what's next for other studios, let's look at Rare and Sea of Thieves. Is Sea of Thieves going to be free to play? Is Sea of Thieves? I don't think so. No. You know what happens if Sea of Thieves if doesn't it, do well? If, they, it, I mean, if, if, it, if it were going to be free to play, that is not the case now. This might. And guess. but what happens if Sea of Thieves doesn't do well? Because I mean, how many studios can Microsoft? You know, once once Rare are cut. Yeah, but you know, I would I would assume Rare. Rare, we know. 
is working on stuff in their uh, incubation program. Because we know what's his name, um, the design, the lead designer who of uh, Sea of Thieves who left. Um, and today felt like pulling a band name. Like I can't today, think of his name. Today was the day where they went. Okay, who do we need to get rid of? Who do we merge? Who do we? We need to get rid of all these names today. That way we can hit the bad news cycle. We can hit it strong. We have plenty of time before E3. It won't be doom and gloom. It's Let's Greg Mails. It. Greg Mails. Um, we know he's in the incubation teams right now. So yeah, but they're, they're, had they're, to have the incubation team for 10 years. Yeah, but not with Greg Mails. That's a big developer to be in. That's a big uh, person to be associated with that. So he's working on whatever is next for Rare after... Sea of Thieves, so at least we know that. You know, I don't think I don't think Rare is going to be done if Sea of Thieves isn't isn't great. But but I mean, the question is, is that if Sea of Thieves doesn't do well, if it's not great, you know, either or, they'll have to downsize. Yeah, yeah, they'll be in trouble. They've already they're not even that big compared to what they were a few like a few years ago. They're, they're rebuilding though. Two hundred people, and now they're one hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty. Like if they want to make a AAA game, how much yeah. more can they afford to go? Yeah. And what are they gonna? And what are they gonna make? Yeah, I I kind of feel like if if Rare has issues with um with Sea of Thieves, that they need to break up into smaller development teams and make a bunch of smaller projects. Much like, uh, what's the developer I'm trying to think of? Double uh, Double Fine. Yeah, something along those lines. Because when Rare did that in the past for Nintendo 64, I mean, it was like pe- 12 people on a development team, 20 people on a development team, and that's when they were putting out their best stuff. You know. And 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 that's why those guys on ukulele are, are keeping rather lean, rather small, because that's the kind of game they want to make, you know. And I mean, then that's kind of the culture that Rare developed at that studio over so many years. So if that culture is still there, maybe it's something they can go back to, and maybe they're thinking along those lines. But I mean, I don't think see if these uh-huh. we have to worry too much yet. You know, it could turn out to be really great. So. But, but I, I'm I, don't, I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to get doom and gloom. I. I am. I am a little worried. I. I, I mean, and and that, and that worries there for a but reason. But like this know? is like saying, I, I think going after rare would be like, well, what if the next Halo game just doesn't sell as well? No. Are they get, uh, but did, if it, well, then they already kind of have that on yeah, some level. So we. They could. They should just get rid of three four three. Turn them into like about like five different separate teams and. Yeah. I'm just I'm curious okay. what happens with what's going to happen with Rare. I mean, maybe a lot of these people from Lionhead go to Rare, and Rare's a lot bigger than it was. Yeah. You know, there's that possibility. Apparently, they're very close with each other, Lionhead and Rare, according to this particular developer um, that was on Reddit. Oh, he also said someone a- asked him um, about the chances of Lionhead surviving this, and he said, "Yeah, there's still a chance." I believe the situation actually happened before in Rare, in fact. And he said he doesn't know anything more than that, but one of his co-workers just brought it up once and didn't ask more about it. So apparently this nearly happened to Rare. I'm not sure when it happened. It either happened probably right after Viva Pinata and before yeah. uh, the Connect stuff, or it happened right after Connect Sports Rivals, and then they were able to get through it, you know? See, Phil is... I mean, he's he's never spoken about Lionhead in the same way as Rare. Doesn't mean he didn't feel the same, but he's been very vocal about about Rare, and some of the people even that left to, to work on Ukulele have been very vocal about how Phil was always a big big fan of them. I think it's much more likely that that happened in twenty uh, sorry two thousand and eight um, when Domatric was there. I mean, they wielded the axe on Ensemble in two thousand nine. Um, you know, there are other studios that. You know, the axe fell upon for one reason or another. And I think that, I mean, maybe Lionhead already had a similar situation like this after Fable 3, perhaps didn't sell as well as they wanted it to, but they were like, let's go to Connect and, you know, Don Matrix lines lit up and mm-hmm. stuff. But, you know, it's interesting that with Fable Legends gone, Quantum breaks out in a month. And the, there's, I mean, all the talk of new hardware soon. You know, 2016 could actually be the year that that anything possibly remaining from the Don Matrick era is completely finished. I mean, you know, the the Coalition, which were Black Tusk, aren't anything like they were. You know, they're much bigger, they're different name, they've got Gears. You know, Victoria went, Big Park, 
who he was part of before he joined Microsoft, you know, they were repurposed and now it seems like they're gone. Like it's quite interesting. I mean, maybe maybe this is Phil wielding the axe to, to get everyone, you know, as we said before, in the, same, in direction. the same direction. But you have to have studios to swim in that direction. And yeah. I just think that, you know, they've got five well, maybe, studios here. Maybe one five. gets announced. Maybe one gets built. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what's going to happen. I really do think this E3 and Gamescom are going to be incredibly telling about the direction for internal development. Um, well, the direction of Xbox. I mean, the whole thing's been yeah. shaken up. Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. So... Uh, it's kind of worrisome and exciting at the same time. Um, like he, this, this E3 could just be like, oh my god, Megaton after Megaton, this is great. Or it just could be like, uh oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just, I don't see it as being middle ground in this case. <laughs> and I, I don't, I feel like, you know, they talk about how they're, they're, you know, they're listening to us. But are they are they hearing like I, I, I feel like in the you know in the past six months they've lost three studios. I appreciate that perhaps many people don't consider Twisted Pixel or Press Play much of a loss, but you know they were hyping up Twisted Pixel's new game at one point. You know they made quite a big the biggest game they've ever created. Yeah, and they were making a big song and dance about um, about the Knoxville and how you know the people were going to choose what they were going to make and and you know Fable Legends was at the Windows 10 event in January 2015 you know and, and all of these studios have gone and I feel like you know if the, if there is a plan for new studios and I appreciate that they're not going to if they were planning any acquisitions which I, I probably don't imagine that they are but if they are planning new internal studios to build them up I appreciate you don't want to announce them too early but I feel like they need to tell people because I think that there is sufficient reason to have concern over the fact that they do have just five internal development studios. I mean, and only four I mean, working on AAA games. I mean, and my, yeah, Mojang's a bit different. You know, they're about forty people. They have a partner. They, you know, they work on PlayStation. And they're not going to make Minecraft too. I mean, they're just going to keep working on Minecraft. So it's not like we have anything to look forward from Mojang Studios. Yeah, and it's like. You know, why why can't they manage studios? You know, why are the wrong decisions being made? You know, if there are decisions to be made, you know, why why aren't they talk why aren't they talking to us? Because, you know, as an Xbox fan, like first party is important to me. You know, particularly, well, you know, it's not the only thing that there is you know, because, you know, I like their partner stuff, but Well, the, I, I mean, you're not going to get them talking about any of this until E3. Yeah, but you know, today would have been a good day for them to actually come out and say some damn things. You know, you got two development studios closed. You got tons of people out of jobs. And what does Phil Spencer tweet today? He makes one tweet. And it's about an article on Kotaku saying, hey, I was wrong about Quantum Break. That's all he tweeted today. Well, it was, a, it was a bit dodgy because he actually tweeted, you know, it's nice to see someone give a game a second chance. I just think, well, yeah. they just cancelled two games. One of which is about to... And that was kind of... That was kind of upsetting, and no one else tw tweeted anything. I mean, I don't think Mike Ibarra has tweeted anything about this. Um, what uh, Aaron Greenberg hasn't said anything about this. It just it it, it seems like they're pretending it's not happening right now, because what's going to happen is you know tomorrow we're going to get the Game Informer cover for Gears, and they're going to be like, "Wow, Gears! Look at Gears!" and trying to get us not thinking about the stuff that just happened today. It's a, at least that's what it feels like to me. Well, I appreciate. It. Perhaps they, there's not there's only so much they can feel necessary. I mean, the thing is, if they go on social media and they could have say you know, sorry act, for act the... too apologetic, then it looks a bit like, well, if you're so apologetic, why are you shutting them down in the first place? And yeah, it seems like there's still said there's something. still some conversations to have here. I mean, the the Lionhead developer did mention, you know, the, the prospect of well, perhaps production might be able to secure this new IP deal. I yeah. mean. I wouldn't be wholly surprised if they rebooted the studio, but would they call it Lionhead the studio, still? Yeah, of well, course. Well, not necessarily. They could call them something else. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, Sony Japan. Sony was, you know, they were rebooted, kept the same name, but I mean, Gorilla Cambridge were originally Sony Cambridge, and they became Gorilla. You know, but if Microsoft were to, they they could give them a new name. They could keep the old one. You know, if they want to be something else. 
then then keeping them as Lionhead puts perhaps puts expectations on people. Right. So okay. you know Jeez. if they ended up cutting them down to between I don't know twenty and fifty people, depending on what they're doing, start again. You know it'll, it'll be a long process, but I don't know. I mean. If if the sort of lead designers and stuff that they've got there are all based on service based games, what are they going to do with twenty to fifty people? Yeah. So, I imagine those types will move over to Rare to help them with launching Sea of Thieves, since they're kind of going in that games as a service direction. You have to imagine some of those people who are experienced with that will be helping Rare. So, yeah. I think they'll land some jobs. You know. And it does look like the industry is already reaching out to all these people to try to get them work, which is a good thing to see at least. But mm. it's just it's a rough day. I mean, I mean we've barely talked about press play. Uh, I think that's a big shame. <laughs> that one really bothered me, actually, more than Lionhead, because they put out they've put out nothing but good games. You know, Max was really good, and I haven't played Kalimba, but everyone I've talked to said it's a great game. And, and then, it, and then they move into a new studio, you know, a new a new building. That, that, you know? was, in, that was in January this year. That was two months ago. They went into like a new studio. Right, and then suddenly they're like, "Okay, bye." The, this one feels really hasty, and it feels like they did it at the same time as Lionhead, so they could kind of hide it. <laughs> they said, "Today is the day of the Band-Aid pool." Yeah. You need, sweat. Just, you need to do it all real quick, and that way it only hurts once. Like, the day before you show your new Gears media, too. That's yeah. like... Uh, <laughs> that's like how the fact they, they, a lot of time they announce news on the Thursday. Yeah. The same Thursday as MPDs. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, by the way, that Kalimba has 3,846 owners on Steam. <laughs> but then it was six months late compared to the Xbox version. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, press play is a shame because, you know, I was hoping they they would go again with Max, which I really liked. It was a fun idea. Well, they're talented. They have good artists there. Uh, they, and they have, I mean, their gameplay was really good for both of those games. I mean, they're, and, they're, t- they're talented developers. I mean, and the thing is, you know, there's a lot of creativity to be had from these smaller titles. And I don't need to tell Microsoft that because they've they've made Ori. And that was usually wildly successful for them, I think, in the end. But it's like, why why are they not interested in these games? They saw how well Xbox Live Arcade did. You know, they really just like, well, X, uh, Idea Xbox does it. Because a lot of the games that they have on Idea Xbox, really, I mean, I don't know how they sell, but I don't think that they have that sort of premium quality, even for the same price that, that Ori does. Mm-hmm. You know, and... You know, I mean, perhaps maybe they feel like with Crimson Dragon, um, with Loco Cycle, perhaps they've had more misses than hits, and they don't want to do it. But it seems very strange that they're, you know, they've specifically divested in pretty much all of their. Um, they're all gone. You know, they're they're smaller, capable studios. I mean, Big Park, I think, probably would have been good for that. I mean, was it there was the, the rumor from Sebo? I know it's probably. Uh, dirty word on here, but they're, they're working on a MOBA before they got, uh, you know, repurposed into apps. You know, you don't necessarily want to keep studios on just for the hell of it, but do you think all of um, their studios are going? Do you think they're giving up on that free to play stuff though? Because I mean, look, do you think that's the reason they they pulled out for uh, funding, maybe for Motiga for uh, Gigantic? Even I wonder if this is all related. You know. Well, the funny thing is that Gigantic is supposed to be the good one. But you're right. I mean, another project that doesn't seem like it's in a particularly good position. Um, I don't know. I mean, how is everybody else... Well, not everybody else, but, you know, free-to-play is so big. And lots of games do so well, but it just seems like they're just picking the wrong games to do it with. Yeah. I mean, that was always what was said to me when I said that I didn't think that Fable Legends would do particularly well. As everyone says, well, oh, it's on PC, free-to-play does really well there. You know, and you look at the big ones, most of them aren't on Steam. Well, not, uh, you know, like um, Blizzard's yeah, I mean, games. No, you <laughs> could name just any, like World of Tanks, not Steam. Uh, like, And, and, all, and, all never, and never, Winter was, never Winter is shit, and that game got a bunch of downloads and tons of people playing it. So... Uh, I feel like they should have still given it a shot to at least try to find an audience, but 
I mean, with Microsoft really are going out of free to play. You know, I suppose the question is, what's what's the what focus? Stop them. Yeah. What's, well, no, what's they're the focus? they're. They're they're gonna stick with this. Hey, let's use our Azure servers when we can because it makes sense. We got them. Why not use them? You know, but but it, I but think it has to I think be they don't. I think the thing is at this point they don't want to focus. What, what it sounds like no, no, the, no, they, they they clearly said they're focused in the PR and in, in the in the press release. You know, they said we want to focus on the games people like, the game that people like Gears, people like Forza, people like Halo. They're doubling down. They're not even doubling down. They're just going to stick to those games. And I don't know if this means, you know, they're not putting as much into internal development, but they claim, I mean, they claim they're more committed to Xbox and gaming as they've ever been. So they better, they better damn well show it soon. Because this doesn't look like that. It was really awful about this whole thing. Is like we've said before, the last big thing they had was Gamescom. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. we've gotten nothing since then, and we don't. We have another as far as game announcements, yeah. Oh no, like yeah. So, and we have another around hundred days before E three. They're not going to announce anything at Build, not game wise. The most we'll get there is another. T- we'll get a tech demo of Crackdown at Build. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, we will because that'll show off Azure and it'll show, you know it'll yeah. be for developers. And they'll be like, wow, Azure's amazing. And they'll look at that. And we'll get some video out of that. Other than that, we're not going to see anything else at Build except for the Universal app platform. Um, Which which Sweeney was bitching about already. Yeah, but he came off. He was uninformed. Yeah. And then he even fucking had to go, yeah, I didn't know all this stuff. So (laughs) he can... Like, his con... That's that's a whole... We'll talk about that on Thursday. Uh, But Microsoft's in a pickle. They need right they need an event. They need something to talk. They can't do this Gamescom to Xbox anymore, like E3 anymore. Shit. But they're go- they're gonna do it this year. They're not gonna give us anything until E3. No, not at all. Well, I mean, we've got we've got Gears tomorrow. I mean, is it so and, unlikely that perhaps and then I mean, Quantum the Break crack, release in April? Crack, yeah. Crackdown uh, devs were saying that there's new info soon. I mean, that that could be built, as you said. You know, is it possible that we get some recore info before E3? Not necessarily mass footage, but, but maybe Steve, like a cover. That, all that is is stuff that's already been announced, though. We're talking about commitment to the future, and that's not commitment to the future. That's just commitment to 2016. Yeah. We don't know what's going on in 2017 or what's coming in 2018. You, you know what? And I don't want to compare it to Sony, but you look at Sony. They're, they have a lot of stuff after 2016 that's already been kind of announced. You know what I mean, and not just not just at Sony. I mean outside, as far as working with uh, other developers, independent developers, third parties too. You know, and it, it well, feels like there's more of a future there. And Microsoft needs to come out and well, show a little more of the future. That's 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 a completely reasonable point. But I think what you've got to bear in mind is that E3 2014, they announced Crackdown 3, Scalebound. Yeah, they and, messed up. Oh, was it Phantom Dust? Phantom Dust, yeah. And Phantom Dust is currently on a shelf. Scalebound's 2017, and Crackdown is, we'll be playing some of it this year and some of it next year. And I think that it was perfectly reasonable when you looked at the spacing, the way that E3 and Gamescom were spaced, that actually, you know, at the end of Gamescom, they had that big picture, the greatest games lineup, and they had like 12 plus games on there. Yeah. And that was a lot of games, and they filled those shows. And Microsoft have always been big event-centric, mainly E3 since they got rid of their XO shows. You know, they were big, but they stopped doing them all in on E3. Gamescom has only become big in the last couple of years. Um, so you think, well... But, well, but I that, agree, it's, it's, not, it's not good. I, I've said well, before, I don't like it. But, I but think the, it's, the other problem, But the other problem is now that we know their internal studios are so small... In comparison, or not small. I mean, there's a lot of people at their internal studios, but there's not a whole lot of actual development teams. Um, but now that they're, we know what they're working on, and we and we know. Wait, they won't have anything to announce over the next two years because we know what they're doing, and there's not many of them. So at least you're wondering, well, who's going to make their games? And remember, this is a year is supposed to be bigger than last. Yeah. Releases. Let's not forget that. This yeah. is a bigger year. And I guarantee they're not going to get rid of that message. 
Uh, I mean, the only well, thing. Well, this year's fine. This year's yeah. fine. I'm talking about after. But no, it, but like this. Uh, what do we have left this year? We got Quantum Break. Uh, Quantum Break. We have. We got. We got Recore. We have Halo Wars Two. Yep. We have Gears, Gears of War Four. Crackdown multiplayer. Crackdown multiplayer. Yeah. I and mean, so was Horizon Three is going to be there. To not have an yeah. abysmal E3. They're going to have to announce new studios. Well, they're going to show all those games we talked about, and that's going to be pretty good. But they need they need actual game announcements. I don't necessarily think they have to announce a new studio this E3. I think if they announce two to three new games, big, I'm talking AAA games with independent developers, you know, that have a lot of that have a lot of money behind them and and look cool. That that probably be enough, honestly. If as long as they make a bunch of smaller announcements too, as far as ID at Xbox and preview and whatever features they're gonna have for the console. But then they're gonna need the same kind of stuff at Gamescom. They're gonna need two to three more at Gamescom, you know? Yeah. So this is it's this just, is a big I mean, moment for them coming. It's interesting because they were able like when Recall was announced like so many games these days are announced and we know that they are coming through leaks i mean i'm not being funny you go on gaff and, and everybody already knows that what ps4 games are coming because all the insiders say and recall was a genuine surprise you know when horizon was there everyone was like oh hey here's this game that actually we already knew about like six seven eight nine ten months ago whereas no one had a damn clue that recall was coming and that, and that's very interesting that they were able to keep that very quiet i mean you know rare kind of made it clear that you know they were going to be there and yeah. and stuff so it is interesting that they've been able to keep anything potential quiet but i mean if we look at next year i mean do we really think i mean of their ips that to be got, fair if none of this happened today we still wouldn't know anything for 2017 they have plenty of time to figure out yeah to but get we their would... 2017 lineup like they but we would feel better but, knowing that they had two extra development teams in their studios that can make stuff later. Hired, like build new teams to replace. I'm just talking, those. but yeah, but it makes yeah. you feel better about the future. Like yeah. when press press play has a game well, coming out. To be out. honest, I'm trying to end the show and end it on a positive yeah. note. Uh, okay. Uh, just because we've been pretty doom and gloom. Uh, well, I think it's a, a pretty doom and gloom. No, but the I doom and gloom day. Like, like there's, there's there's questions and things that I think are reasonable questions that you know that they have to show to us yes. and we sh- we should and be we should challenge be them E3. and we can discuss them now instead of doing it on the next show so we don't have a doom and gloom next show well, you know? and you we, we already did our doom and gloom I, I'm literally saying we're we're about we're at the hour mark I told y'all it's gonna be half an hour to an hour long so I. Final thoughts. We're just going to get down to that. Uh, I think they're just rebuilding. I think Fable. They, there's Lionhead was designed for uh, like free to play. They couldn't get anything else out of it. That's why they haven't closed it down completely. They didn't say, "Yeah, you're closed." That's why they're negotiating something. But they have to figure that out first. But they're just rebuilding. Um, but this was literally them just ripping the band-aid off before a big announcement like Gears so that they could try to get over this hump as fast as possible and then at E3 announce a new studio, show their exclusives, and kind of recommit to their new vision. Because they have to show a whole new vision with both Windows and Xbox for their gaming. I mean, it's everything is up in the air. Uh, so they have a lot to prove. That's a make or break moment for them. This E3, yeah. it's probably their most important E3 in ever. Shit, ever. I don't ever. know. I don't know how long. Yeah, well, probably. I tell you what, since two thousand five. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is huge. All right, any Vern, you got any closing comments? Yeah, that's it, man. Steve, just you know, as as someone who resides in the south of England, you know, perhaps it's a shame that you know yeah. something that such a big studio has been lost you know, so near to me. I mean, you know, it's like a 45 minute drive, but you know, that, that's, that's a shame, particularly as I feel that, you know, when they were at their peak, I really liked Fable 2. You know, I really liked Fable Anniversary. I liked what I played of Fable 3, you know, and I liked Max and Kalimba. It's, it's a very sad day 
for for all these people and you know hopefully you know there is you know there is a vision and uh, i look forward to the day when they they show us this vision and perhaps they can you know set the record straight all right well there you have it that's our our feelings on the subject we will be back on thursday for a whole regular podcast gears gears Gears. i won't be here though sorry guys I won't be I'll, here. I'll be I'll in Ireland. I will officially nerd out on Gears for you, Vernon. Okay. Yeah. Gears is better than Halo. No. And that's where we can't end the show there. Halo's yes. the best. Gears is better than Halo. <laughs> it is the official <laughs> Xbox game Uncut the Weekly Podcast Game of the Year it's 2015. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Oh, one more thing. Fable Legends will be up until April 13th for people in the closed beta. So if you want to play it, that's as long as you have, because it'll be gone forever. Yep. (laughs) Relegated to three videos and Ryan McCaffrey's tweets about how he told them so like two years ago. Well, maybe maybe some modders will be able to extract the files from the PC version and do as, something, as if, but I doubt it. I doubt it. As if I doubt anyone who cares. I rolled out to the music, and y'all, y'all, y'all just kept talking through. It was awesome. Oh, <laughs> we'll see y'all later. That's not cool. <laughs> it's what it's what I do. <laughs> All right, peace out. Everybody.